scripture, we'll open the meeting with prayer. So honour and glory to God, peace on earth. Goodwill to all people, Lord, develop a new heart inside of all of us. Instill in us your sacred spirit. Help us, guide us in all the things we need to learn today. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now we'll move your chair up. So are we ready for the deputation? Yeah. Uh, through the chair, yes, we can do deputations. Just, is there no public forum this morning? No, no public forum. Okay. That's fine. We'll carry on with the deputation. And I believe we've got the wonderful Kai, Kai Tai Croaky Club here. Yes, we're here. Good. Right, you have five minutes from now. Thank you. If you'd like to just introduce yourselves, that'd be fantastic. And your members. Yes. Well, I'm Drago Yelovich. I'm the spokesperson for this little group. On my left here is Neil Marshall. And on my right is Joe, George Smith. They're my um, compatriots in crime. Um, firstly, we thank the community board for giving us the opportunity to put forward a suggestion that we feel would benefit the community for years to come. It involves the site that was the Kaitaia Bowling Club. We are sure you would agree the site in question should have been left in a more acceptable condition since its demolition. We believe it's an eyesore and a health hazard, harboring vermin. Our croquet club was required to vacate and not use our premises and lawns while demolition was in progress, to which we complied. The time frame given was a couple of weeks. This was extended on and on. The directive was that the said building and area was asbestos contaminated. There is still a sign on the entrance to the property stating it is contaminated. Up to the present time, we have had broken windows, stolen mallets and balls. Metal bars have been put in. Concrete has been used to break windows in one of our storage sheds. We have had to board that up with ply. The said concrete would have been carried across our lawns. We only can only assume it were two legged. As a long shot for future development, the Croquet Club and the community, our club would be very interested in a lease similar to that we have with the council at present with our number three lawn. Our proposal is that the council purchase the old bowling club area, extending the recreational area from the hub, netball courts, a and &P grounds, scout hall, Tauhu, skateboard bowl, children's play complex, tennis courts, squash courts, basketball pad, old warehouse, and across the river, the ladies bowling club, gym club, pirates club rooms, Kaida rugby club, Sunray Park, Arnold Ray rugby grounds, plus the primary school. It would be possible for the Croco club to extend using some of the area as parking, which would alleviate the congestion in Matthews Avenue in and around the area while croquet, tennis, squash, and markets are on at the same time. If a large function is held at Tahu, vehicles park right down to the tennis courts. We feel the S Bend, which we believe could one day be realigned, could end up with us losing a lawn. The murals on the old warehouse are brilliant, though can catch the eye of drivers, especially strangers. It's not a slow road. On Saturday market days, it's pretty congested. Safety is paramount. Our club hasn't got the means to purchase the property. Tongue in cheek, here is an opportunity for the council to acquire this small pocket and give Kaitai a perfect recreational area for future generations, plus something for the older people. Should the council reject this proposal, the Croquet Club requests that the mess left after the demolition be cleaned up. Again, note, the area is still asbestos contaminated. Matthews Avenue is the bypass. At the site in question, a large hoarding belongs to the Kaidai Garden Center. Advertising their services are fine. 
but the example it is attached to is not very good and doesn't do Qatar any favors. We rest our case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from the board members to the Kaitaha Croquet Club, please? Adele, through to the chair. Yes. Drago, Bill Sabrisky speaking. Yes, mate. How are you? No, I, I totally agree with you in terms of the congestion on that area. And um, I, I think that the car parking there is um, has always been dangerous, overcrowded in terms of what happened, used to happen at the squash club when we had tournaments there. Everyone used to spill everywhere. And, and like you say, the traffic doesn't slow down. So sooner or later, we're going to have some sort of catastrophe there. So um, I, 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 I'm right behind your proposal to uh, developing an additional car park in that area. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Is there any further questions from the board members? No? All good? Okay, well, thank you so much for coming along and giving your deputation. Um, we'll be considering an a, a, um, a item that's on our agenda further on in the in the actual meeting. So it's all on public exclusion. So um, we can't discuss that at the moment. So um, you may well hear the outcome eventually um, and what what will happen. So the recommendation is to um, pass it on to council. So at any rate, we will um, discuss that further on. But thank you so much for coming along. Thank you. Just one little thing I'd like to just add in there. With all those things that are, I have mentioned that are um, from the hub right down to the old warehouse, virtually everything is, pertains there to um, young people. Yeah. Whereas the Croquet Club is of the older generation. Yes. And um, I think would be a nice gesture at the present. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thanks thank you so very much for hearing us out. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye for now. Good one. How do we take it out, Carol? Hit the phone. Look, the lead carry on with the meeting. Hang up. Yeah. Hang up. There you go. Right, um, now then we're up to speakers. Kim? Um, yes, that's correct. So we have JC Horan here to speak to their application. Okay, thank you, JC. You have five minutes. Thank you. Morena. Morena, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you, uh, all the board members. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of um, our trust, Te Whakaora Tangata. Um, as a local person that's been brought up here in the far north, um, and just wanted to talk to you um, a little bit more about what this mahi does in our town. Um, I'm just a little bit of background about me. I am JC Horan. Um, my mother's from Ahipara, so my family ties are here in the far north, local, local girl. Um, spent, uh, did a stint in West Auckland and mum had the call to come home to the whenua like most of the Fano do. And so well, I've been home um, and I've just taken over the family farm at Fairburn. So a local girl, my husband also, John Horan, he's um, on ACC at the moment, but uh, he, he was doing the mahi with us. Um, born and bred at Whatafifu, which is where we're living now. So uh, the application that we've put forward is to help us with our fa uh, family restoration program that we hold four times a year. Uh, we've literally just completed our September program which ha um, and our graduation, which completes the end of our five-session program that we run here for high-risk whanos here in the far north that are struggling in um, a variety of areas, um, some could be domestic violence, uh, drug and alcohol abuse, other addictions, um, uh, family breakdowns, whether it's a single person struggling with um, children, struggling in their fa family dynamics, or couples that are struggling in their, in their relationship. So for us, we work with couples or individuals 
and the idea and what we do is we look at specific areas of trauma, mostly from when they're younger, that has impacted and shaped them as to how they grow, what, what type of person that they are uh, to that they the things that they go down in life which may not be great decisions a lot of the time but we help them to look at firstly what why they're there and a lot of the times so what we find is that from zero to five zero to ten is very much the main impact of them how they've been shaped growing up we help them to see where they're actually living at now. So looking at um, reality, what house are they living at the moment? And just to give you an example of on our program, we, they give it a name. So we show them, they, they write down all the emotions of what, they, what they're going through at that stage. We put a roof on it, we put walls on it, and we say, this is your house that you're living in, that you're bringing your children up in. Probably a lot of you, your mokos, because we have a lot of... Um, grandparents as well that bring up their families and they name their house and um, they usually call it the Whadipaku house <laughs> or the shit house. We're very real in our program and the difference um, with us is that we actually tell our own stories of the trauma that we've had, um, that we've experienced, the way that we were shaped growing up and everyone has trauma, everyone has some type of rejection that shapes them into the way that they go into life and the decisions that we make and uh, from there we help to restore them so the program is a five session time where they actually have they go down memory lane as we're telling our story as we're telling them about our mamai they go down memory lane at, um, as to where they're at and perhaps why they're at, at that point and then we finish off the session where we bring them to a point of hope and that's the main thing that everyone wants um, and finishes with our graduation, which is we're asking for assistance with the venue hire at Te Ahu, where we do a big graduation after each program. So it'll be four programs that we run in a year, um, and we do an amazing graduation for them, which a lot of them have never, ever experienced actually finishing anything let alone being able to celebrate what they've gone through and coming to the end of it and knowing it actually it's just the start. So for them with us, it's the start of the journey. And um, I guess the main thing is that we work with um, a lot of local social workers. Um, so Te Rarawa, Ngāti Kahu, um, Hekorawai Trust is where we actually first started. Um, and we're finding that that's just amazing because we deal with a specific area of trauma which a lot of whānau um, really struggle to open up to other organisations with or other referring agencies don't have that expertise to go into the root issues which are things that um, set the foundation for people's lives and to help untangle all that, that, that mess that's happened right at the very beginning. Thank you, um, JC. Is there any questions with reference to the application that any of the board members would like to ask, please? No, not from me. Um, kia ora, Matt, three yeah. minutes here. Oh, does someone else want to speak? Yes, you're welcome to speak. Um, so, so JC, how many whānau have you helped so far, or have you? Because I know you're, you're not that new, are you? or you've been around a wee while. The um, trust has actually been um, in Manirewa for quite a number of years, just over ten years as a trust. Um, and here we came, um, so two years. Yeah, oh. just on two years, um, we we I, we reach. I'm just trying to remember the numbers. I'm, it's about 150 people so far. Wow. But in thinking of that, the impact of that is not just the individuals that come onto the program, but the children that are impacted because the, fam the, the, the couples or the individuals are living much better mm. in the help that they need. So, yeah. and, and also the extended whānau. So it grows a lot bigger than that. So the impact on the community is, is huge. Oh boy. Thank you for that. Good work. 
Thank you. Is there any further questions for JC? No? Thank you. So. Through the chair. Yep. Uh, through the chair. Uh, Certainly. John? Better put my face on. There you go. Okay. Hey, John. I know JC well. Um, I suppose, JC, what I'd like to ask, how is your budget separate? Obviously, the far north budget around this. I mean, you look at some of the figures, this is obviously a, a massive trust uh, corporation that you're working for. Um, does Kodai have its own budget as such? Is it something that you have to manage or someone within Kodai has to manage outside of Auckland? Yes, we have to cover our own resources, our, um, our own finances in the far north branch. So, yes, we have a, a branch in Auckland, but they also have to cover their own resources. And being here in the far north and more remote, it is actually harder to get the funding that we need. We're not government funded. Um, so we rely on um, people such as yourselves and private, or, uh, private people that actually want to help communities that want to help people. Thank you. Oh, that's really good. Is there any further questions for JC? Yeah, just one from me, Adele, through the chair. Thank you. Hi, JC. Bill Sabrisky speaking. Um, in terms of your post-course, uh, sorry, post-program support, what's the norm? norm? Um, how long do you, you continue to support the, the, the families or monitor progress? Yep, we're, uh, we're a lot different to other organisations that are government funded because they have a certain time frame. With us, it's um, when as long as they're engaged with us, we keep walking with them. It can be um, okay. up to six months to two years is, is yes. what we usually say. It's different for every couple because some people just need a little to get back on the right path and get them started again, where others that have been, especially when we find we're working with a lot of um, gang whanau, it takes a lot to untangle all of that past trauma. And we do that, but then it's like, what do you actually do now? I'm okay. I'm, I've li lived my whole life in a gang. What does life look like now? So we help them to... The three stages is restoring, which is the program, and the private whānau sessions that we do with them, and then the couple sessions. If they're in a relationship, we bring them together once they've both done the program. And then from there, it's the resource, which we help them look at everyday life. What What is actually normal? Because a lot of them don't know what normal is. Right. Their normal is totally different to what we would class as normal if we've lived in um, a quite healthy life um, family environment and then reconnect so um, an example I've actually just spoken to one of our whanau that's just finished the program um, him and his his partner they've got a little child and he started his first day of work yesterday so we see through that's all good. the stages of course we, we don't treat them as um, they're all individuals they all have their own individual walk none of them are the same and I think that's where Te Whakao Te Tangata are we um, walk with them as to where they're at knowing that sometimes it's going to take a lot, lot more afi to get them on the right track Thank you very much JC perfect, thank you Well that's awesome, thank you so much JC so when you have the award ceremony, would you like to invite uh, invite the board members, please? Yeah, that'll be fabulous. Yeah. So we'll be doing our next program next year because we've just finished our graduation, um, and now we're we're working towards their private sessions and their couple sessions. So it's intense, but definitely we'd love to have you guys along. It'd be amazing. That'd be lovely. Yes, just send us an invitation. Well, oh. thank you, thank you so much, and we'll be considering your application further on in the meeting. Fabulous. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Jason. Bye. Bye. So through the chair, we now have Jess, Jess, sorry, Jeff Lawson here to speak to their funding application from oh, Youthline okay. Charitable Trust. Thank you, um, Jeff. Welcome to our meeting. And um, you Thank now you have very much. to present your discussion with over this um, application. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Can you can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. I'm just a, I'm just a little hearing impaired, so um, sometimes I have to ask for uh, questions or uh, comments to be repeated. Anyway, good morning and 
thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, today. Um, I represent Youthline. Uh, Youthline is a national organisation providing mainly helpline services to our rangatahi in need. To give you a sense of scale, last year 150,000 contacts to our helpline nationally. Uh, obviously, uh, mainly by text, but by phone calls, emails, and uh, by web chats. Uh, the helpline costs us $1.35 million a year to operate. We receive funding from the government of $90,000. That means that we have to fundraise $1.2 million a year for our helpline. And that's a, that's a pretty tall order and has been extremely difficult in these COVID times. There's no doubt that COVID has significantly impacted on the rangitahi of Aotearoa um, with uh, increased stress levels and presentations that have demonstrated uh, an increase in complexity, putting a great deal of pressure on our existing resources. Uh, and uh, that unfortunately long tail continues we saw, we have seen a doubling of contacts to the helpline in the early stages of COVID and a significant increase in, as I said, in the complexity and depth of contacts. With respect to the far north, um, we uh, estimate that uh, uh, in, your, in your council area, uh, we have, uh, we received contacts of just under 600 contacts from young people in your area. And now noting that there are, I think, two and a half thousand young people aged 15 to 24 living in your area, uh, that, fi that uh, 550 odd contacts that we received from your young people represented almost one in four contacting, uh, contacting us for support. We are the, and whilst we don't have a physical presence in your area, we very much are part of the community, both through our helpline, which has a very high recognition level amongst rangatahi. 76% of young people know of the existence of Youthline and its helpline. We also, in collaboration with um, uh, the Attitude, which is the youth division of the parenting place, we promote our services in schools. And in recent times, we have um, connected with schools in your area, in Kaitaia College, us, uh, and as an example, in Kaitaia Abundant Life School. Both of those schools we presented to a total of 450 students at those schools. So again, not actively, present in the area, uh, not, not, not a physical presence in the area, but active very much. And um, we've been grateful for your support in the past, and we would welcome the opportunity to, to make a contribution. The cost of providing the helpline based on a pro rata basis, obviously, to, uh, to Tehiku is uh, about $5,000 a year. That's out of the 1.35 million. So we're asking for a contribution to that $5,000 uh, from uh, the local council. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Is there any questions for Jeff from the board members, please? Just through, Madam, through the chair. Jeff, um, Bill Sabrisky speaking. Can you hear yes, me? Sorry. Yes, I can, Bill. Uh, okay. Um, can Can you tell me or outline the process for me if, for example, I called you um, with a problem, obviously, the process that happens then? Yes, indeed. From there on? Yeah, you're more, Bill, you're more than likely to uh, make an initial contact with us by text. Um, and so we have uh, 200 volunteer counsellors, and those counsellors receive an intensive one-year training program okay. before they are allowed to go what we call solo on the helpline. So if you're, if you're texting me and I'm the counsellor, I will reply to your text and we will have right. a text conversation. Um, Depending on what your, if you're, depending on the nature of your uh, inquiry, 
or contact with us okay. will determine how we handle that. In a large number of cases, we can the the counts the volunteer counsellor uh, can uh, handle it, and it might be say directing the young person to a local service in their town, that sort of, or giving them information. Where we become aware that there are that the, there is the call is of a more serious nature, we have a what we call a triage system, and that the the Councillor will hand it over to a skilled uh, uh, councillor who is a staff member and has a much higher level. It's sort of like going from the nurse to the doctor, if the, if you understand, understand the analogy. So our, our people are trained to recognise uh, the um, the severity of the shall I say of the contact, and right. we and we triage and escalate accordingly. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Jeff. Thank you. Is there any further quest questions for Jeff from the board members? Yeah. Thank you, John. Through the chair, Jeff, uh, John Stewart speaking, Jeff. Hello, um, John. Your uh, volunteer councillors, are they, uh, do we actually, if it's not sensitive information, do we actually have volunteers in the Tohoku area? No. We, you? Uh, no, look, we don't. At, we don't at the moment. They tend to be, to be honest, they tend to be all Auckland-based at the moment. Well, not all of them, obviously. Um, we have them. We have ten hubs throughout New Zealand, and the they uh, the councillors obviously not at the moment because we're we're having to do it remotely. Um, but generally speaking, the councillors will go into the hub and so those hubs tend to be in the the bigger areas and and no we don't have um uh specifically volunteers in your area mm. i just would add if i may just but briefly the volunteers we're a sort of a with you um, we're a, a youth organization with young people supporting young people so what we do know is that the young people who are our, our volunteers are at the end of the text are young people who understand and empathise very much with young people um, uh, and the problems that they have. Yeah, I guess there's some sort of universality about that, John. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thanks, thanks for that. Thank you, um, John. Is there any further questions for Jeff? Actually, sorry if I could just say something. Yes, certainly. I, I suppose where I was coming from, Jeff, and I'm not. Um, this is, don't don't take this the wrong way because I'm, I'm all for I'm all for what you're doing. I was trying to picture a way of your application having um, a reason for the training, if you know what I mean, from each. And this could be for every area in the in, in um, when you're applying for funds through the council. Wouldn't yes. it be if that particular person was needing training from that area, and and you had and you said right, I need three thousand dollars because the training's going to cost seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean. And now uh, that's where coming from, and and please don't think that um, I'm trying. Uh, like we will definitely still discuss this as um, as a group. I yeah. was just trying to help in a way of when when. The community board funds have been issued as such. We, it's 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 easier for um, <laughs> we we like to see the final. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, uh, well, look, I understand entirely what you're saying, Don. I'm very mindful of um, of of um, our situation. If you like, we're not actually there. We we can't actually demonstrate like the previous uh, uh, speaker was able to talk very much locally, well, we can't do that. But what we do know is despite everything, 500 people, 500 kids from your area have contacted us for help and we have been able to provide that help. Bear in mind that in a digital world, um, um, the, the, the online connection is the major form of connecting. We are using 
online uh, counselling as well, so that if we get escalate to a if it if it if it requires some form of counselling, then we'll do that online as well. But but we're very mindful of that. But but to be honest, you know, I've been, I've spent quite a lot of time in the last twelve months working with local councils and in, uh, in the air and 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 sort of come across this. But I guess I'll to. Uh, so this is not an issue that isn't foreign to, to me, but uh, in fact, I recently uh, had some support from the Waitomo District Council, um, as an example, first time, and they sort of bought into the idea that there are 300 people living, 300 young people in Tikawiti who were supported by us, and with and conjunction with attitude, we went along to the local high school. And we've and they've actually on the strength of it asked us to come and join uh, some of their sessions at the, at the local schools in Tikawiti, in fact. So that I, I I'm sort of trying to spread the word a bit, and 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 we have been, we have enjoyed some support from the the three uh, the local councils up north, and uh, we were grateful for that. But we're trying to localize it as much as we can. But we 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 accept that. Um, not being physically there just makes it a little more of a challenge, but but the need does not go away. I can assure you, and it is it is yeah, there, yeah. and it has never yeah. been greater. And frankly, we're the only ones that they can reach out to. There are no other youth specialist organisations offering the nature of the support that we can provide. So th thank you for that, John. Yeah, and thank you. I, I think the best the best way of you. Um, um, Simply, you've been here and talking to us about it, like um, half of us don't even know about these lines. Yeah, I think, uh, very half, half of these help lines. So, very as a community board, um, we need to know, and uh, we really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's been yes. a great opportunity. Thank you from me too, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. That was great, and we will be considering your um, application further on in the meeting. And thank you for attending today thank, and thank you very much for your time yeah. it's great to have a conversation and uh, uh the COVID has its upsides in terms of uh, when you think of it if we we weren't in COVID and lockdown we probably wouldn't have done this to the same extent but i'm and i'm really impressed with the fact that you've encouraged us to participate like this almost required of it of us and i'm grateful for that thank you and have a great day thanks very much bye -bye. thank you thank you bye now bye Thank you, Kim. So we're now up to the um, confirmation of the previous minutes. Do we all move them? So is there a seconder, please? Yeah, right. I'll second that. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Is there is any amendments or no? Okay then, so we will vote on it. Thank you. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye and Councillor Foy. <clears throat> aye, aye, aye. Thank you. So up to item 8.1, which is on page 30, Chairperson and Members Reports. So do I have a mover, please? Darren. Thank you. A seconder? Bill. Thank you, Bill. So my report, please just take it as read. Is there any questions um, that you'd like to ask out of my report, please? I'll virtually make it quite clear. So <laughs> Sorry? No? Nobody? All good. All good, thank you. So, um, Bill. 
No, oh, take mine as being red. But just an update, I'm working, um, I had some uh, in my issues. I'm working at the moment with the staff on the uh, Rangiputa Northern um, ramp for repairs. So hopefully I can sort that out. And uh, the emphasis obviously is to get it done before Labor Weekend and may, maybe uh, an onrush of traffic. Just an update also, yesterday we had the blessing of Yunahi Wolf. Um, we had John Carter, the mayor there. Uh, we had Shane Jones and probably another 30, 40 yard people. Um, luckily the weather cleared for that and it was a brilliant day. Um, and it was a good chance just to see the, 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 the old wolf before it disappears. Um, after the proceedings, basically the, the uh, work, work uh, load, uh, sorry, the workers went straight on and started you know, strategizing how they were going to remove it. So, you know, the excellent feedback from the local community who thought that was pie in the sky stuff, getting a new wolf, and, and it's happened. So brilliant. And thank you for any, everyone and anyone that's listening who was part of that process. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. That's great. So is that you, Bill? That's me. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Darren, would you like to give an overview yeah. of your... Um, report I did find it in, in my junk mail eventually. Yeah. Sorry, it didn't get into yeah, the agenda. Yeah, most of it um, is uh, just generic, just meetings I was at. But one thing that I'd like to bring up is that we've got two bits of dangerous broken concrete footpathing up here in Pukanui. And no matter who I ring or what I do, I can't get any results on that. So in the end, I through talking to Peter Wiseling, he put me on to Gareth Oyn, and I rang him and he said, I'll send somebody up there today. This is on the 14th of the 9th and still nothing's been done. And these are big falls in concrete creating a one and a half inch lip that people on bikes are running into. Um, there's been no accidents yet, but sooner or later, there's going to be one. And I've been trying since Christmas and I just can't seem to get anything done. So I'm just raising it here today. And it was in my report and um, I'll, I'll keep trying, but it's just seems to be batting my head against the brick wall the whole time. And it's, it's not that difficult to fix uh, these problems. That's all I've got to say on that. Thank you, Darren. So, um... Is there any feedback from the staff about this, please? Because obviously the, you've put in request for service for the, have you have you got a request for service number that you could follow up, Darren? I haven't got a request. I need, didn't put in a request for service. I've talked to people higher up the chain um, than that. Um, Gareth Owings is the highest guy I can go to other than Aram goes. And just nothing happens. I've, I've got the workman who work up here all the time, the, the maintenance men, they've taken photos of it, they've marked it with orange paint, but still nothing happens. Okay, please put in a request for service because nothing will get done unless that happens. I can just, because if it's an extra piece of work that's actually got to be done, um, the contractor has to be paid for it and, that, and it has to be tracked through a request for service. I'll do that today. Okay, I thank you. I, at one point, I, I thought I may have put a request for service in, but obviously I hadn't. But I'll do. I'll put it in today, right after this meeting. Okay, and make it urgent, please. Madam Chair, may, may I comment? Yes, certainly. I just want to support the point that you're making and, and really encourage the use of the RFSs. We, we have 8,500 requests every 23 days, 23 working days of the month, which is um, not always understood, a massive. Um, I don't want to call it a sausage machine because that's a bit, a bit derogatory, but the only way we can get this volume of work done, and we do, is to get it on a conveyor belt and deal with it in a really slick way. And if it doesn't enter as an RFS, then we do, um, we, we do, we, we do have trouble. Uh, and it also saves you calling the workers because that's definitely not the way to get things done. If it goes in at the, uh, at the beginning of the 
process, they will they will get it without interrupting their work chain with all the other all of the other RFSs that they're working on. So, just to, just to total call the chair here, a really really highly advisable thing to do. So we'll look forward to seeing that come into the system. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, so, Darren, is there anything further? No, no. Thank you for that. Um, I do. I have put RFS in for lots of other things. Just. Um, I may have gone about this one the wrong way. Okay, thank you. So is that your end of your report, Darren? Y yes, I am, thank you. The rest of it's just generic um, meetings I was at. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any report from you, Jackie? Just um, just a verbal report, really, um, what I've been up to. Um, uh, we met down with the people, uh, with the, the whānau, the, the, the takiwa here at Ahipara, re oh, yeah. the tree incident, and uh, that's, you know, uh, come up with some resolutions of what the what the, peop what the whānau here are going to do. And so I'm just um, being available for that. Um, Felicity is also involved in that. Um, conversation when we met Sean down there. That was really, really helpful to, to get some clarity over that. So um, thanks coming out, Sean and, and Felicity for making that happen. Um, for myself, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of, of putting in an RFS for Whangapai Road. It's a shocker. Um, yeah, having been out there recently, I know our roads in the rural areas seem to get forgotten quite a bit, um, but I climbed in and out of a few corrugations and it was, uh, yeah, so you expect that in the next day. Um, and uh, yeah, just got to find out which photographs to send because there's quite a few of them. Um, and also there's some um, concern too. We've got um, the sea now is encroaching over the road in the lower lying areas, particularly out here to Kinnell Way. So um, that's something that I'll be putting forward as well. I'm just waiting to get the next high tide. And uh, because it's coming up and into paddocks now, that's, that's how much over the road it's coming. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not good. Um, something that we've got to think about for the future about how we're going to, what are we going to do there? Um, yeah, so that, that's that been a couple of things that I've been up to. Kia ora. Okay, thank you so much, Jackie. So Cheryl, is there anything you'd like to report to your Rainbridge, please? I can't make my camera go. Um, just a couple of things that have happened since the cutoff date. Um, the board made a submission to the Regional Land Transport Plan. Uh, three things that was concerned about was uh, walkway from Awanu to Kaitaia, walkway from Ahipara to Kaitaia, and a boardwalk along the foreshore at um, Pokanui. We have no idea whether any of that funding was approved for us and how would we find out um, whether it's in the National Land Transport Programme or not. That's my first thing. And my second thing was I participated in the um, online session regarding heritage areas on the 1st of October. Um, it was interesting to learn that participants from other her heritage areas have concerns about the um, consultation process, but I guess the staff have taken that on board and will act accordingly. So that's me, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Cheryl. So perhaps um, put the um, land, regional land transport um, issue into an REFS and see how that can be elevated, please. Yeah. And find out an, a, you know, an answer. I'm, I'm not sure how to um, get an answer to that unless the staff can advise on that. No. Okay. John, would you like to give a verbal report, please? Yes. Um, thank you, Adele. Um, please read my report as unread because I have not supplied one again because I am slack. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Well, I have to remind you all, you're all online and being. <laughs> Video I'm, I'm, on YouTube. I'm only being honest. Um, uh, just, just quickly, uh, um, Jackie Re Fungapay Road. I know um, Dave's been down there taking some photos too. Dave Collard, 
because I actually gave him a property to have a look at for me. I can't I can't recall the road exactly, but he's he's definitely been down that way. He might be um, maybe he's got oh. some information as well that might help you. And the other thing is a board. I, I, I'm trying to recall. Um, Darren might be able to help me. Um, obviously, with the recent accident um, up California Hill, um, there's a request from. Um, Louise Rogers, the principal of the um, Pukanui School on Lamb Road, re, um, I think it was around signage and slowing people down. And I just wonder whether we need to, I don't know if that went through as an RFS or I, I think we need to look back at that and make sure um, and I, um, someone's on top of it before, um, before we have an issue, which right. is is yeah which is a council issue uh, i take it yeah so can anyone recall how that went through i mean i don't mind finding it following it up but um if there was an rfs paid darren did you do an rfs there or or can you help no um louise came to our meeting out at Fata fifi that day and she actually spoke to the people who did the job so once again an rfs probably wasn't raised but I can tell you the job hasn't been done. Okay, and Kim, Kim, Kim might have some feedback, her hand is up. Uh, so through the chair, member X is correct, it was raised at a meeting and we did have two IM staff there at the time who spoke to um, the principal. So I will follow that up as one of those staff members have left in the meantime. Um, so I will just chase that up for the board. And if I can't progress it, then we will raise an RFS in relation to it. Thank you. Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, can I just check with my staff here? Kim, have we got a collation of um, outstanding RFSs for this board? Um, I am not too sure. Melissa had been providing them and I'm pretty sure she still does track it. I'm just not too sure where they are up to at this stage. We'll just take on the task of just clarifying that question for you, Madam Chair. Just obviously a couple of questions coming up about RFSs. It'd be good to know that we've got them all in one box for you, but we'll chase up out of session. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, Yes, yeah, so through the chair again, um, if um, if one board member wants to be put in place to follow that one up, um, I, I mean, Darren's not always on a computer. Um, so, Kim, if you give us all the feedback, but I'm happy to um, keep an eye on that one if need be. We, we shouldn't need to, but if I need to. Okay, thank you. So that's um, everyone's given their reports now. So um, we can vote on the item, please. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Aye. Um, sorry, Madam Chair. Um, do I get to do a report? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> usually don't. <laughs> um, oh, thanks for that. I'll turn my camera on. Um, so, great report, everyone. I don't have a written one. Um, so there's been a few things happening, and thank you, Jackie, for acknowledging the Pudakawa um, and that significant tree that's um, an issue that's arisen. I thought by last Friday that there was to be a staff report provided um, about that from district services and um, essentially where our council was at in terms of... Um, compliance or not in the history of the tree. Um, so I'm not aware of being provided that. Have, I'm, sh I'm not sure, Sean, if you'd want to give us an update on, on that. I can, yes. Uh, did you want to do that first, um, Madam Chair, if that's okay? Yes, that's fine. 
Yeah, we did uh, produce a pre preliminary um, report, which was um, which was in raw form, a, a lot of communications in a series of emails, but uh, we've got clarity on, on what's occurring here. It's not necessarily good news for anyone who's got a, um, a, a prize by Hitakawa in their neighbourhood because they're not protected across the district. There's a system for uh, noting significant trees and a register for maintaining those, but there's obviously a, a limit as to the size of that to keep it sensible. And generally speaking, the owners of properties with, with Pahutakawa on them do have rights to trim and prune. What's been brought to the fore, forefront here is uh, is the lack of definition that exists for what that is. And I don't, I don't want to make a, a statement that has legal ramifications here, but um, the definition of pruning and trimming definitely would need looking at in the context of this particular thing. I know, and I think you know, that the owner of the property was um, was not just remorseful, but quite upset and uh, uh, even panicked by what had happened. So obviously, there's the, the right thing seems to be being done with regards to the site, but nevertheless, half of that tree has now been now been removed. And it wasn't uh, all that flash actually before it was done. It was an arborist who was involved and that limb of the tree was almost horizontal, but I won't be making a judgment here about whether it uh, is gonna be better for having had the work done or worse off. So that too um, uh, is for, for future consideration. But the bottom line is we need to make a couple of changes out of the lessons learned here so that we've got other Pahutakawa of significance or any big Pahutakawa in the district offered at least a conversation before uh, that's broader than the landowner before it's before it's um, um, before too much work is done on it. So that's in progress. We're tidying up a written report. I'm expecting the draft of that today, actually, uh, which you may be interested in. But the bottom line is that the act that was carried out on the tree is actually uh, cannot be redressed. It is within the right of the of the landowner. Well, it would be great to see that report um, looking at all the district plan rules and the history of the subdivision, where council sits in terms of private covenants or not, um, and um, the history of there's a reserve behind it, you know, and that tree and how it relates to that reserve or not. Um, yep. So that yep. would be That's, helpful. That, that is all clear. And, uh, and by the way, I did communicate with Hami Pitapi on Friday evening uh, with with those results when they came in. He was he won't be satisfied. He's a calm man, uh, and he didn't tell me what his inner thoughts were, but he was very satisfied that we'd um, done a look at it and got back to him with the information. Yeah, and it'd be great to see a qualified arborist as well. There's there's few and far between in the far north, so it'd be interesting to see, you know, what qualifications whoever's dealt with the tree has formal qualifications. Um, so that would be helpful as well. And in the new district plan, a definition of trimming would be helpful as well. Um, we know that we default to the dictionary definition for any items that aren't defined by the district plan. Oh, yeah, there. Got yeah. Uh, Madam yeah, Chair, so. I, I will, I'll be taking my leave before an 11 o'clock appointment and whilst we've got Councillor Foya on the stand, um, she might want to talk to Kai Momo, which would be the other thing perhaps that others have an interest in with regards to the roadworks out there. Up to you, Councillor, if you want to raise that while I'm in the room. Um, well, the Kai Momo situation has been ongoing for a while. Um, I guess... Yeah, I mean, you can speak to that in the council motion that's already being passed. Um, yeah, it would be good to get further clarity about the whole tree situation because just down the hill here, there's a formal occupation occurring right now and like road safety works with cones are on the road. Um, yeah, so um, do you want to speak to that Komomo one, Sean, and then... Um, is, that, is that okay with the chair? Certainly. Uh, the community out at Kaimomo, as you know, were uh, have been uh, collectively upset from two viewpoints about the the road that runs out to the to the boat ramp. Uh, it's a metal road, and there is one property owner who claims that the road is theirs, 
and the council claims it is public ownership. We're very confident that it's public ownership. We've done a lot of surveys and research to, to get to the bottom of it. We were quite open-minded as to what we were going to find, but it is clear. Um, the appellant is saying that it's not and would prefer to take this through the Māori Land Court to get clarification and um, has acted to put some speed control, some an informal speed control um, on, on the road in the meantime, which um, are not safe in, in my assessment. So the conversation uh, is, is really been between them and between boat owners who really are wanting to use that road in a much less constrained way. We we've got to at the moment is that council have resolved to have the obstacles removed immediately rather than wait for the Māori Land Court. Um, we are under quite a bit of pressure to do that now. I prefer to negotiate for a little bit longer with those who are upset until we're, and we're close to being in a place where everyone's going to be looking forward to doing this together. But that's no longer an option. And so I've got my, I got my instructions from council to, to get it gripped. So what's going to happen in very short order is we'll be removing the obstacles from the road and putting in uh, professional speed control, and that is to say some form of hump or, or judder bar that achieves exactly the same aim. And one of the reasons we uh, councils asked us to expedite is because the potholes in the road are quite significant now, it's really falling to pieces uh, and it, it becoming unsafe in its own right. So we'll be doing that very shortly. We'd love to have public consultation. We, we would always do that normally, but we're not going to in this case. We just need to get that job done. The good news for the area is that um, two other projects were approved by council in considering this one. One is more, more, more orthodox speed control on the tar sealed part of the road before you get onto the metal, because there's some uh, boy racers out there that are quite keen to, to safen things up for. And secondly, or thirdly, uh, overall, the tar sealing of the stub road that goes to the public toilets we built for them out there because there's a short length of, of metal road which is um, doesn't really fit with the aesthetic for the town and, and, and causes dust and so forth. So it's really good news in general for your community out at Kaimomo. They've got these three things going on. It's just one of them is a little controversial and um, could become very controversial, but but that's our that's our role is to just try and do this as um, calmly as we can for all the right reasons and, and we'll be getting into that very shortly before Labour Weekend. Thank you so much, Sean, for that. That's great. Thank you. John. Yeah, thanks through the chair. Uh, Sean, um, is the, um, I should really know this, I should know the answer to this question, but is the, are you going to, I know the house in particular where the uh, chicane and speed humps and that'll be going. Um, are you going to seal further, a little bit further down there? Or are you just going to um, put speed humps on the loose metal part of the road? The latter. When it's confirmed that, uh, to the satisfaction of the, of the applicant, that we uh, own the road, uh, we'll, the, all, all forms of investment, normal investment in the road will be possible, including dust suppressant, uh, which will be a satisfier to those who live along it, but there is no conversation at all about sealing that road. There are there's a there's a um, sealing matrix for prioritising our 1850 kilometres of metal road in in the north, and it's uh, a very selective process about what's next cap off the rank because of the expense involvements. And this one's not on the radar at the moment. Okay, thank you. I'll take my leave, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks very much to everyone for letting yeah. me join. Thank you so much, um, Sean, for attending. Goodbye. Bye. So, Felicity, is there any further um, feedback from yourself? Oh, thanks for that, Madam Chair. Sorry, I just switched around some of my devices. Sorry, that one, lost. one lost battery. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so. Um, Sean's gone through a couple of um, the items there. Um, that's good that he's done that. I'll be um, reviewing the information, particularly about the Pudakawa there um, at Ahipara. That's been a huge backward step, in my opinion. Um, 
with relationships and um you know that subdivision was done a really long time ago um when i was like 15 but you know we're here on the council at the time and so we're the face of the council and um it'd be great to see what the staff have to say in response um so further to that the taku master plan um you may have seen are you there sorry Yes, are we going to discuss this now or afterwards? Oh, afterwards. Um, but um, the Tokyo Master Plan, they've made great progress with the the playground equipment. That's all been advertised, what the new playgrounds are going to look like in Awanui and Ahipara. So that's been really positive. Thank great, you. Yeah, yeah. And great <laughs> feedback about Awanui and the port and the portholes. That's looking really fabulous. Um, thank you to all involved with that. Um, and Unahi was um, where it was all go this week. So thank you to Bill um, in particular for his work with Unahi. Um, and, and thank you, Felicity. You were there right yeah. from the start. No worries, Bill. Um, so it's great that we're all working together and seeing physical progress. Um, so they were excited to see and hear that their road is to be power sealed as well this this summer season <laughs> and um to hear that in year three of the long-term plan there's also funding there for um the foreshore development adjoining the wharf so um that's exciting yeah. times for um unahi um and the other thing i did this uh, week was about Gunfields Road. I don't know if anyone's been to Gunfields Road um, recently. It's a mess and it's got a big slip and there's no um, stormwater control. So um, yeah, it was great to get the maintenance engineers there because once we have the the walkway um, up that uh, road and we've got walkers on the road. Um, it's going to be quite a hazard. Um, so they'll be addressing that before summer, but before it becomes a, a safety mm -hmm. issue for those people um, utilising the road, both cars and pedestrians or walkers. I think that's enough of an update for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Felicity. Really appreciate your feedback. So now we are, does anyone want a break just now? No, you're okay. We'll carry on for another half an hour or so if we have a break. Okay. So we're now on to item, where are we? Item 8.2, which is the Tehiku Statement of Community Board Fund Account. I can never fathom this, fathom this one out, but anyway, um, I'll move it. <laughs> Second it. Thank you. So any questions on this one? Um, so we have $64,000 available for distribution for the remainder of this financial year. Is that right? Have I read that right? 64. Oh, oh I, don't, I can't understand this account. On page 37, we've got 289,639, and then as a balance, and then they list these commitments. Oh no, the commitments come for 64,000. Yeah, so yeah, if you turn over the page, there's 225,021. Oh, I should have put that all on the same page, but never mind. Yep. Okay. Good. Thanks. All good. So, shall we vote on it? On receiving it. Yeah. Chairperson Gardner? Yes. Member Brown? Yes. Member Axe? Aye. Member Bainbridge? Yes. Aye. Member Stewart? Yes. Member Sabritsky? Aye. And Councillor Foy? Aye. Cheryl. 
You're we wanted. have an unspent amount of $35,338 placemaking project for Awanui. Do we need to do anything about that, Madam Chair? Oh, we, we, it's going to be in the next report. Okay, good. So we're up to the funding applications of 8.3. So um, we can, can we do them all individually, please? Um, uh, through the chair, that's no problems at all. We can take those individually. Okay. So we will take number A, which is um, the first on the recommendations of $1,304 for Te Waka Aroa Tangata um, application. That JC Horan spoke about. Are you looking for a mover, Madam Chair? Yes, please. I'll move that. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. Is yeah, there can any I, um, through the Chair, um, Adele, I don't know about the rest of the board, and I know we've been down here before with um, with applications. It was nice to see a face um, and 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 have someone local. Um, and I know it's not easy for some of these uh, um, some of these trusts, but um, it, it, if we recall the last time they were here um, and we were talking to someone in Auckland. Um, it was just nice to see, obviously, someone that's at the, at the ground working at it, um, talking to us. That's, that's my opinion, and also that it's directed at the um, at the high ridge as such. Um, yes. So I I'm I'm more in agreement on this as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this one before we take a vote? Um, I, I think these people are really struggling, but I believe that, you know, central government has a responsibility that it doesn't seem to be fulfilling in this area. Through, sorry. Through the chair? Yes. Sure, I, I agree with you, and, I, and it goes back to the other, the other speaker too, the other, other application. It just seems in the, this, uh, these times that the, the central government should be approached and should be should be helping out a hell of a lot more um, in terms of these um, community, you know, dire community needs, and which the and they are, are going to escalate too. Thank you, um, Jackie. And, sorry, and, so yeah, like sorry. Yeah, uh, the other thing I wanted to say too, and, and um, yeah, I, I did 28 years um, working with youth, and um, the second application, I know I'm talking before that comes up, but the second application talked about not being there. It's real important that you have a face in the community that you can go to, email and all that, and the initial contact is good and all that, but again, you can't beat a person uh, uh, that you can go to in the place you're at. Absolutely, thank and you. And sorry, I think that applies to, to the, the second application, so I'm sorry for that. Okay. Kia ora, Madam Chair. You're just in speaking in, um, in favour of this um, application and having spent 30 years um, in that space, working yeah. in the community, um, having an opportunity to celebrate what is a very hard journey for families is a great thing. I don't think the money's outstanding. It's only $1,304. With, it's not a fortune, but if it means that we can support something that potentially has shifted the lives of 150 vulnerable people in Kai Tai, I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy investment. It's about six dollars per person, you know. Um, so when you look at it like that, it's for, for me, it, that's the reason why I'm supporting this. And I know it's central government and this organisation, by the sound of it, proudly um, refuses central governments. Um, support because with central government funding comes central government rules and they felt that maybe perhaps one of the things is, is that they feel caged in by those rules because they have so many barriers in there and they're able to work with them in a different way so I think this is a it seems to be a genuine grassroots organization that's um, yeah that's trying to do something different up here they've seen a gap in the 
in the market of support for, for vulnerable families. So I'm all in favour of supporting it. It's it's. Oh, I'm happy to second um, yeah. that, Jackie. I was just making the point that I believe we're being let down by central government. Exactly, Cheryl. Thank you. Yeah. Well said, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Catherine Turin, you, you actually had your hand up before. Did you want to say something? Good morning, everyone. I was just going to say, when I was talking with Simone, who is JC's next one up, she was saying they were actually asked to come into the far north region to do their work. And they do actually collaborate with a lot of other social organisations. So there is some collaboration going on with central government. Um, but there is a limit on how much funding they can get from them as well, unfortunately. So, so they aren't refusing help out of hand, but they are trying to work with everyone to get everyone's goals achieved. Thank you, Catherine, that's fantastic. Is there any further um, discussion on this one before we put the vote up? No? Okay, we'll go to the vote, please. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. Councillor Foy. Aye. Thank you. Right, we'll go to the next item, which is the um, 15. Oh, no, 3001 from the Youthline Auckland Charitable Trust. So, um, do I have a mover and a seconder, please? I'll move. Thank Gary you. Second. Thank you. Right, we'll discuss this one. How does everyone feel about this? Um, maybe uh, Adele, through you, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, 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 it was very nice to have the, the gentleman we had. Um, what was his name? I have his name. Jeff. 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 Yeah, Jeff, come in and talk to us because it was able to put context of what Youthline is um, and having. <coughs> excuse me. Those statistics of what's happening in the community, and um, I, I know from a personal, from a personal uh, view. Youthline is the go-to that I recommend for my own children because I have quite a few of them. Um, and uh, they have used that service before and have found it very professional. My, one of my children was referred on to a counsellor locally from that That's service. True. Um, she didn't know who to go to in Kaitai. I said, well, just call Youthline. And they knew who to talk to. So, uh, yeah, and I, I, I wasn't aware that she had actually followed up on that until I talked to her last yeah. night after I saw this application. I said, have you ever used She said, yes. And they were, they were really good mum. She says it's just young people talking to you and then they put me onto somebody else who she, so she could get the support. So at a personal level, I know that they do deliver for Tehiku. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there. Kia ora. Thank you. Through the chair. Thank you, Jackie. That just uh, answers my question too about that local link. Um, it's imperative that we have that as part of the service. And I know that happened, but I just wanted to make sure. Is there any further discussion on this one? Yes, Felicity. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to maybe ask the staff, have they gone to each community board asking for this money? Through the chair, yes, they have. Um, every single board has got the same request going to them over the next three days. So we're the first to vote? Yes, you are. Thank you. Uh, oh, that that was my question. I guess I'm aware of um, Youthline, and um, although I'd love for it to be based here in the far north, I do recognise what Jackie has raised that because of it, you know, being a phone service, um, that it's available throughout New Zealand. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I am supportive of Youth Line in general, um, particularly for the youth. Um, 
yeah, I, I was a bit torn with this one, but hearing hearing what they're saying, I think that today I'll, I'll be in support of it. Thank you. Does anyone else like to discuss anything? No? The only, only thing I want to point out is that back in um, July 19, our board gave them $1,535 back in 2019. So I just wanted to point that out, that was all. So if you wanted to change the motion at all, you can do, but um, you're quite happy with the 3000 we can vote on it. It's moved. Yep. Okay. Voting up. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. No, Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Bye. Thank you. So now we're on to C. And I would like to um, change the motion, please. To read. So I have a mover. I'll move it. Anyone? Um, Who's going to second this, please? I'll second it, Adele. Thank you. So I would like to change the motion that has been suggested in, in this particular one because the actual consultation has actually been done with the community um, and also the Awanu Progressive Ratepayers Association. So by actually um, putting that motion in was just going to go round and round in circles again because the actual um, consultation has been done. So we can actually take that out please and um, that's if it's um, and then just sort of um, I want it fairly general and it's not the Awanui Revitalisation Fund, it's the Tahaku Revitalisation Fund, I think I think that's the name of the actual um, account that's with council. I'm not sure. You'd have to check that one out. Um, and it's to be it, not just the toilets, but um, it's it's the upgrade beautification on the toilets it is. Is that would be right, Bill? That's right. Yeah and the reserve and the Awanui and the reserve at Awanui. So that sort of gives it a general, so if there's anything left over, which I don't know where there's going to be, um, it can just be allocated onto the reserve, which is all being um, updated now um, from the, yeah. So how does, how does it read now? Allocate some from the, So how does that read? Is everyone happy with that? Yep. Through the chair, that answers your question, Cheryl. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Sorry, thanks. Um, can I just ask the staff what how they feel about that wording of that motion? And if it's illegal in any way? Through the chair, so because this is just amending a previous resolution made to provide more context around it, especially for within council, so that when it is transferred into a budget, we know what it is to be used for. So, no, that's fine. Thank you for that clarity, staff. Do we need to put anything in there about the consultation has already been done or what? Do we need need to allocate, put that in or? No. No. Okay, well, let's vote on the amended. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member X. 
Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Aye. So now we have D. So I'll move D. Do we have a seconder, please? Yeah. Cheryl, thank you. So can I just ask a question to the staff on this one? So from memory, I think the actual account was $90, was it? Uh, um, through the chair, that is correct. So sorry, the $103.50 includes the GST. Okay, well, when when you actually take the money out of our account, is it just $90 that comes out or is it the whole $103.50? Uh, through the chair, it's the $90. That's fine, because I know that the um, GST gets claimed back. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Thank you very much. So we approve the sum of really $90. Because if we approve the sum of sum of $103.50, $103.50 will come out, won't it? So you'll have to, is it 93 is it? I think it's $93. Is that for sure? Yeah. Okay. And then that's excluding GST, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's just that we still have to have including GST if applicable in the resolution. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So, um, so now I'm happy with that one. So, uh, do we have um, the voting up, please? Yeah, Any Member Gardner. <laughs> Aye. Mm. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Aye. Okay. Is anyone ready for a break just now, or would you like to carry on? There's only two more items. Okay. All good. We can have a break before um, PX or something. Okay, so we're on to item 8.4, which is the project funding reports. So do I have a mover? Darren. Thank you. Seconder, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll second. Thank you, John. So there's just one thing that I would actually like to add on to this one is the um, is at the back of the project reports there was an item on the um, Monganui rugby. Oh, we've got that there. It's, yeah. it's our Nui complex. It's there, isn't it? I thought I read it. Did you read it? Is the Awanui complex included in that? I'm sure I saw something somewhere about the Awanui complex. Mm -hmm. And the in the actual report in the um, of information. Pardon? It's in the <laughs> information, isn't it? Yeah, and the members' information, it's page one fifty one. Right towards the back. Yeah. If, um, is, is there any reason why that one wasn't included in in this report? Through the chair, that was received last minute. I'm not sure 
why it didn't make it onto the list there. I was going to put it through in the next month because they sent, I know what it is, they sent us a letter of thanks and then I said, well, we'll, we'll put that through when we get your um, report and I was going to put it in next month's one. So I, that must have accidentally come in this one's one, but wasn't up for accept for being oh. accepted. Yeah. Did, did, um, shall we leave it then until next time? Or? You can leave it until next month and then I'll just include it with that. Yeah, because it's all right the, with you. Um, the, you know, for transparency reasons, um, Absolutely. the public won't actually see that report. Exactly. Agenda. That was, exactly. That was just my query, really. No, that's not a problem. It was meant to go in next month's one because it had missed the yeah. cutoff date for the actual report. Okay. My apologies. That's fine. Thank you very much for that clarification. That's good. Okay, well, we can, um, is everyone happy with this report, these, these reports, please? Is there any discussion on them? No? Okay, we'll vote on it. Thank you. Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Aye. So we're up to the 9.1, which is the information reports on the action sheet. So I'll move that one. Can I have a second, please? Karen. Thank you. So what's changed from the last one? I'm just trying to look at it. Seem to be anything changed. Any discussion on this one, please? Um, can you change resolution 2021 by 19? It's Pekama Road, P E K A M A Road. Um, and also, when will we learn, please, when we are going, when or if we are going to get subsidies from Waka Kotahi? Uh, through the chair, I can definitely change the spelling. That's not an issue in terms of the subsidy from Waka Kotahi. I have not heard, but I will follow that up for all the boards, as I don't think any of the boards know at this stage. I, I don't think the council even know yet. Is that right? No, I don't think we do. How come? It's a program has been issued about a month ago. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know what sort of funding. Um, I know that they've probably been um, let know, but I don't. It, there's been no report come through yet from council about this. So um, hopefully we'll find out in the next few weeks where we stand. Um, Madam Chair, um, if it's on the action sheet, are we able just to get that clarified with the asset manager for roading? Bushler? Through the chair, yes, we can. That, that would be really helpful. Probably not just for our board, but for all the boards. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this one, please? No. Okay, we'll vote on it. Thank you. We'll go backwards this time. Councillor Foy. You're work. tricking me. You, you're tricking me. Yes. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Member Sabritsky. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. And Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Thank you. So that's the end of the actual public meeting. Now we need to, um, are we going to have a break now or are you 
going to go into public exclusion? Uh, through the chair for live streaming purposes, it's probably easiest to go into public excluded and then have a break. Okay, that'll be fine. So I need to, uh, I'll move that we go into public exclusion. Do I have a seconder, please? Darren. Thank you. So the tape will be off now, is that right? <coughs> so we'll just um, move and carry it first and then we'll stop the live stream. Oh, okay, radio. So Chairperson Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Councillor Foy. Aye.
that staff were going to talk to us now about the notice of motion part. Through the chair, that is correct. Would you like to close with a uh, karakia or prayer first? Okay. Mm, I don't think I've really got any closing. Would someone else like to do a closing, please? I can do a closing. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Kia tau, kia tata katoa, te atawhai o tatu araki ahu kiraiti me te aroha, me te atua, me te whiwhinga tahi tanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, 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 amane. Amane. Amane.